Hello everyone. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome to the Calgary Zoo's Facebook Live. My name is Cindy. I'm a member of the communications team here at the Calgary Zoo. And today we are up with our lemur troop. Um, I'm here with our lead primate keeper, Carrie, and I'm going to turn this over to her now and she's going to share with you guys um, what you're going to see here today. So let me just <laughs> flip this around. There we go. Hi everybody, my name is Carrie. I am the lead primate keeper here at the Calgary Zoo. Welcome to you all. Uh, just wanted to introduce you to a couple of very new residents that we have here at the zoo. We'll start off with these guys. Um, we have three black and white ruffed lemurs that we're gonna take a look at first in our outside corridor. Uh, two of these males came to us from Moncton. So I actually went on a, on a wee trip um, a few months ago and picked these guys up at Magnet Hill Zoo and brought them over for uh, our resident male Manabe as a little bit of company. So um, we're just going to pan over and take Let's a look see. at our black and white ruffed males right now. Manabe, who has been uh, part of our lemur family since opening, is on the far right. He's hanging down at the bamboo feeder. So he's the one that we wanted to get some company for. So anybody that had come to the walkthrough um, in the previous uh, summer would have seen that Manabe didn't have anybody with him. So that was our first priority was to get some company for him. We have our other two males, um, Tana oh, and Revo. Here. here we go. Yeah, if we just pan down. So there's a little guy in the box right now. You'll be able to see his face in a minute. His name is Tana. And his twin brother, Revo, yes, is the little guy working over there with the frozen snack. <laughs> Aren't they cute? And this is Manabe hanging down. Yep. Doing the jumping. So Tana and Revo had their first birthday on the 21st of April. You will notice that I just put a mask on. As we get closer to any of our non-human primates here at the Calgary Zoo, because of the COVID, um, we are making sure that we're very, very safe um, when we're within two meters of them at all times. So as I'm getting closer to the exhibit, I'm wearing my mask. I hope everybody can still hear me all right. And yeah, so these are our guys. So right now, uh, these males, we have been undergoing an introduction process because they have only been with us for a couple of months and we are getting everybody used to living together in the lemur habitat. So mm -hmm. right now these boys have this outside yard and our other lemurs that we'll see in a little bit um, have access to our main walkthrough yard. Okay. Looks like everybody's having some fun outside today, enjoying this <laughs> beautiful day outside. Absolutely. Yeah, these guys, as soon as it gets to be three degrees, uh, we can give them access out. Um, you'll see that these black and white lemurs who are critically endangered have a nice thick coat. Uh, these guys, uh, the black and whites, uh, in Madagascar live on the eastern side and, and more rainforest environments, so heavier rains than the other lemurs that we'll see today. So they have a nice thick coat to keep them warm and dry in those longer uh, rainy periods during the year. So these guys are actually a little bit more hardy than our other lemurs. So now that they are living here, um, they are doing a great job. Of course, Moncton, New Brunswick gets nice and cold as well. It so certainly these does. Little guys. <laughs> <laughs> so they're pretty good and used to the cold, but it's that three degree mark that we give them access outside. They can come inside if they'd like to at any point in time. You can see that they choose to be outside at this point. Absolutely. We have Grady who's watching oh, and wants to know, what do they eat? Hi Grady, great question. Um, what we do offer these black and white lemurs specifically is um, a little bit of fruit and they also get lots of vegetables, fresh vegetables, um, leafy greens throughout the day as well. And then it's called um, a leafy biscuit. So anything that they sort of need um, dietarily, they're offered every day. What we do is we work through our commissary to make sure that these guys get variety. Can you imagine Grady getting the same thing every <laughs> single day? And especially if you don't like broccoli, it would be awful, wouldn't it? So we make sure that we actually work very closely with our nutritionist uh, to make sure that they get a nice variety of fruit and veggies. Black and white lemurs um, are frugivorous. That means they eat a lot of fruit out in the wild, so they actually get the largest portion of fruit out of all of our uh, lemur species that we house here at the Calgary Zoo. Um, but we make sure that they eat their veggies too, Grady, just, just in case. So they <laughs> Everybody do eat their eats veggies, your veggies very, very well. Yes, absolutely. We have Bennett who's watching and is wondering what these guys like to play with. 
Oh, Bennett, what don't these guys like to play with? So these little new guys um, that just turned one on the 24th of April, uh, they love anything and everything. And <laughs> if you just look up here, you're going to see Tana. He's got his head in um, a little bit of a canvas bag. And as you look around the exhibit, there's lots of boxes. So there's things for them to get into. These guys in the wild are natural pollinators. They're actually the largest pollinators in the world, so they're very special. And they get those noses into everything so when we're specifically looking for and making enrichment for them they love to stick their whole heads in things they like to grab things uh, with their hands and bring it out so you'll see lots of paper in here today we do other sorts of shredded paper we do like you can see there's frozen treats around there the is. exhibit too um, we will smear fruit we kind of take it and soft fruit in and around the exhibit as well so they have to do a lot of licking so same sort of natural behavior that they would do in the wild as well but mostly we make sure that they have a party several <laughs> times a day not just they have some fun every time and that's part of a, a zookeeper's job here at the zoos to make sure that they have lots to do throughout the day so we have Latteris who's watching and is nine years old and is wondering how old is our oldest lemur hi Latteris our oldest lemur if you come over here She's actually right in the front with one of our lovely lemur keepers, Jen. Her name is Radish. She's on the right. She's 29 years old. She just had her birthday in March. And her husband, Red Baron on the left, is 28. Both of those, those are red-fronted lemurs. We have a family of four. And these two are the oldest out of all of the lemurs here at the Calgary Zoo. And you know what? They do great. So we have mom and dad, so radish on the right, uh, red baron, and we affectionately call them mama and papa, mm -hmm. uh, are here. And then if Cindy pans up, I can get up. to Jen, uh, that's one of their daughters, Dora. Uh, they have two daughters in this family group. Dora is 11 years old, and rhubarb, let's see if we can find rhubarb, her. Rhubarb, let's find her. Let's find rhubarb. Let's see. She's around here somewhere. See if we can find her. Anyway, we have another daughter in there too. As soon as we she's in here her, somewhere. I swear she's in. Oh, there I think she, she down is. There. So she's just moving away from us now, moving towards that crate. Um, that crate is in there for a very specific reason. What we do with our lemurs on a daily basis is called crate training. So anytime if we need to move them around or they need to go to our health center for a checkup or anything like that. We make sure that they get lots of time to be comfortable in a space like that for transport. So we make it very, very positive. And sometimes we'll even bring those into the exhibit with us so we can have some time with them. As you can see, Radish is, mm -hmm. oh, looks like she's eating a little bit of um, pepper there. They love peppers. You're going to see a little bit of onion in front as well. So that's also part of enrichment for our red fronted lemurs that Jen, our lemur keeper, just put in for them. And they'll do what's called self-anointing behavior, which if we see the younger girls come up, they might take some of this and start rubbing it on themselves. Oh. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. So not all enrichment is specifically food. So we want to make sure that we're offering them lots. Oh, if you pan up. I can. Okay, we have Dora with a piece of onion. There's Dora. She's going to display for us some <gasps> self-anointing behavior. Is. Look at her. So she just rubs it. it <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she's having a shower, doesn't it? She's having a wee shower uh, with onion, which sounds pretty funny to us. Um, but some food items will make uh, certain kinds of lemurs, uh, spider monkeys, and capuchin monkeys self-anoint like that. And uh, they love the smell. They move it all around. They'll salivate a little bit. They get a little bit of drool in there as well. And it's another way to enrich them. So here she comes. That is so interesting. <laughs> I learned something new today. <laughs> There's Dora. So we have Aurora, who's nine, and we also have JC, mm -hmm. who are watching. And these questions kind of go together. So Aurora's wondering, where do they sleep? Mm -hmm. And JC's wondering how much they sleep. Oh, great questions, you two. So red-fronted lemurs, um, they usually, they like to have lots of naps during the day. Uh -huh. So when you guys come to visit us in the walkthrough, uh, you'll see that we have 
uh, tiny windows of opportunity for lemurs to be up sometimes because they are uh, very, it's called diurnal, so very uh, active during the day and that's when they eat and play and do all their good stuff. But after about 20 minutes of moving around and foraging, they have a nap. Now mm. I like naps, I'm sure you guys, I hope you guys do too, they're Love good naps. for you. Um, but definitely these guys like to have a little bit of a rest in between. So normally we find that they're most active in the morning and then late day hours and that's the same in the wild. Red fronted lemurs in the wild like to hang out quite high in the trees, uh, sort of in dry area. shrubland areas. But because of their small size, as you can see, they're not very big. They're the smallest lemurs we have within our species here at the Calgary Zoo. Uh, they kind of go up for safety. So they want to make sure that they're safe from predators. They want to make sure they can get to the good food items. So these guys will usually nap. Um, a little bit high up either on our platforms. So when you guys are in the walkthrough, you'll see we have flat platforms around. We have little pods that are shaped like large fruit seed pods mm -hmm. out in the walkthrough that they can go in and stay warm if they want to. Or you know what, they'll just curl up on a log. And Aww. this family is very tight. You'll usually see all four of them together. They are. Um, we have, let's see here. We have Sarah uh, coming in with a question for the Citadel Park Grade Threes who are watching, <laughs> and they are wondering um, about. Well, they're actually, they're wondering how old these guys are, and I think we had talked about sure. these guys being two of two of our lemurs, the oldest. That's right. We can go through quickly again. Hi, Citadel. <laughs> so we have um, a 29 and a 28 year old, and that's uh, Mama and Papa, or Radish and Red Baron, who are the parents. And then we have their two daughters, Dora, who's 11, and we have Rhubarb, who is nine years old. That is awesome. We also have another special shout out to do today. And we wanted to say hello to the Renfrew Educational Services kids, families, and staff. So we hope you guys are tuned in and watching and enjoying our lemurs today as we get up close and personal with some of our troop. Hi, Renfrew. <laughs> oh, here is oh, Red Baron doing Red Baron. some more vigorous self-anointing behavior. So we have the, the Citadel Park grade threes. They're wondering, do these guys like to be alone or do, do they prefer to be more social with the group? So great question as well. So within their family group, um, at parts of the day, we will see all four cuddled up, having a little nap together. But during other parts of the day, uh, usually Red Baron and Radish, where mom and dad will stick together. And then the younger girls, Rhubarb and Dora, their daughters, you might see them out and about in the walkthrough, just having a little bit of time to themselves. So whenever we're doing a feed, they do spread out a little bit and we scatter feed many, many times a day to give them lots of opportunities uh, to get lots of food and to kind of exhibit uh, the natural behaviors that they would exhibit in the <laughs> wild as well. And uh, then you'll see them come back together as a family for overnight. So they all sleep together, but then during the day, yeah, sometimes they just like a little bit of alone time. So yeah. you'll see them moving out and about as well. So both. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Look at this Red Baron. I think I saw him just give himself a little rub down with his, with his onion. Yeah. <laughs> um, Harrison is watching, who's 10 years old, and is wondering, do lemurs like to cuddle? Hi, Harrison. Uh, you bet they do. So lemurs like to get in close contact with other lemurs that they really like to be with. Um, and they do groom each other. So lots of times people, when they come to the zoo, they might see um, grooming is when they'll take their hands and just sort of work through the other's fur. Um, they'll just sit very closely together. Um, that's also, it's, it helps keep the fur uh, very, very healthy, but it's also a very social bonding experience. So um, if any of you guys that are listening, if you like to hold hands with your mom and dad, or you mm -hmm. like to just be close um, with your friends, um, of course right now, that's it's a little hard, but it when you're is. with your parents, um, it's the same thing. It's a very social activity for them to do. And lemurs, on the other side of that, um, they all have what's called a dental comb. So their lower teeth, their canines, and their incisors are all fused or all together. And that's what they can actually do to work through the fur of each other when they're in. Ah. So they'll lick and they'll use that dental comb so on the, the bottom of their teeth there, and then they'll actually groom with their hands as well. So you're gonna see all sorts of that thing. So 
as these guys are moving through, um, if it gets a little bit cool, if they're out here and they still aren't getting any sun, like we're not getting any sun today, unfortunately, and maybe some other days this week, they do come together to cuddle, to stay nice and warm. They can always go inside if they want to in this weather, um, but they'll also just have body warmth. So you bet, they like to be very close to they one another. They like to cuddle. They do. Um, Kylie is watching and is wondering how long these guys typically live. So the black and white rough lemurs are quite long lived and they can live up to be 30 years old. Wow. So um, we have Manabe who's going to be turning six years old. So he's our male that we've had. He's just in the back right corner right now. He he's going to turn six at the end of this month. Uh, so we have many, many more years with Manabe, we which do. we're happy about. Uh, the red fronted lemurs on the other side, they typically live uh, 20 to 25 years, but as we mentioned before, somebody's 28 years old, here's Papa and Mama is 29. So you know what, they're doing great, they're healthy, they're active, and we couldn't be happier with how they're doing in our family group. And then our ringtail lemurs that we will go over and see in a few minutes who are in yes. the main walk through yard, typically between 19 and 22 years old. Wow. And we have some older ladies on that side too, which I will introduce you to. Very cool. <laughs> so our Citadel Park grade threes are wondering, how do lemurs communicate with each other? Oh my goodness, also an excellent question. Um, they have many, many ways of vocalizing, um, but the number one way that lemurs can communicate with one another is through, it's called olfactory ways. So mm. through their sniffers. So if you're watching Red Baron still right now, looking <laughs> cute, eating his onion, um, whenever they're doing any rubbing or anything, they're gonna sniff before they eat. They're gonna sniff, so any kind of food that they find, um, right they're now. gonna be sniffing and eating <laughs> on that side. Um, those lovely long tails that they do have, and that's across the board for our black and white ruffs or our ring-tailed lemurs. Um, they use those tails to communicate as well. Um, they will make sure that uh, if someone is cycling or um, seasonally they will come into a place of estrus where they are receptive to a male that can waft through the air with those tails. Um, they also communicate, of course, with their little voices. So um, the vocalizations that these guys have, I like to equate our little red fronted lemurs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they sound like little hippos. Oh. So little grunting noises. <laughs> um, and they're usually talking little squeaks, really high pitched, short squeaks. Um, our ringtail lemurs, uh, ringtail lemurs around the globe use have the most vocalizations of any lemurs Ooh, that's interesting. in the world. So they're constantly um, doing little hoot hoot noises and uh, talking to one another. And our black and whites, well, they our are the absolute whites. loudest. They are um, pretty loud. You can hear them across the zoo once they get going. And those are mainly for spacing calls to make sure that, you know, boys, if they're a little bit separated, if they're in different areas and they have access inside, they know where the other boys are at all times. They're letting the other lemurs know in mm -hmm. the group um, where they are as well. And it is cool to hear. So um, I don't know if they'll do it now. It's usually sort of in the early morning and late afternoon that we do hear it but it can be at any time of the day so maybe they will... we'll get to hear yes and boy it's super special shall we go visit with the ringtails yeah let's do it let's do Come it on through. Um, as we're walking I'll answer some more questions or ask sure. some more questions here Tasha who's nine is wondering if our lemurs like watermelon Oh my goodness, yes they do. <laughs> and, um, but they don't love all melons, so that's good that oh. you actually picked watermelon, that's very good. Our lemurs love watermelon. Honeydew, not so much. Just a little fun fact for you to know. This is funny. So here's Jen, our lemur keeper, feeding down with the lemurs as well. Let me do some quick introductions. Let's so do it. You guys can see. So uh, right in the middle on the left of the box is Sophie. She is one of our youngest ringtail lemurs. She's 14 years old. Celeste to her right. Uh, she is 19. Uh, she has a birthday coming up um, actually uh, next week. So wow. she's the next on our birthday list. Joanna, she has a shortened tail if you're taking a look at her. Joanna is our oldest ringtail at 22 years old. And then if you pan to the left a little bit more, Hannah. 
whose there nickname is Hannah Banana for all you guys listening. Okay. Hannah Banana. Yes, and Hannah Banana is 15 years old. Wow. So, yeah, they're all doing very well as well. All girls, all ladies. These are all girls, our ringtail gleamers. <laughs> So the Run Through Education Services is wondering, do they have any toys or tools to play with that help to keep their brains active? Yes, yeah, so enrichment, um, as I was just quickly mentioning with the black and whites, but I will absolutely elaborate. Thank you for the question. Uh, we wanna make sure that they have lots to do every day. The simplest thing that we do for them is do a scatter feed. Uh, so that's what Jen did with the food, just moving things through the mm -hmm. exhibit, all over the exhibit so that they can keep moving and again exhibit very natural uh, behaviors. If, Cindy, you pan to the yep. right, um, you'll see a couple of tubes, black tubes hanging in the exhibit. Yes. So we have all sorts of feeders like this that we change out every day. Um, they're made of bamboo, they're made of hard plastic, so very, very safe for the lemurs, and we will hide food items in there. So we've done it with just putting food in there today, but we will do things like wrap uh, different food items in paper. Ah. We will add shredded paper, we'll do leaves, we have wood wool, we have mulch, all sorts of different things that we can put in there to increase difficulty for the lemurs as they're moving around. So they always get food Sorry. that's scatter fed. <laughs> we can go back they to the other lemurs if you want. It's a bit of a cooler day, everybody, so they can kind of come and go as they need to. Yeah. Um, but it looks like they want to move towards the building, so we'll move back towards the building. We'll move back over and check in yeah. on these guys again. And then um, the whole thing is just making sure that we're always rotating our enrichment for them because you can imagine the uh, boredom can be uh, a problem with these guys. <laughs> we want to so keep them sure. active and entertained and Absolutely. doing some natural behaviors. Absolutely. So Andrea is wondering if we have bred or if we have plans for any of our lemurs to breed? So uh, out of our ringtail lemurs, uh, we have all females right now, so there are no plans to breed ringtail lemurs. In our red fronted family, who are in our uh, exhibit inside today, uh, mom and dad are, as we mentioned, quite elderly, so, mm -hmm. and they're in with their daughters, of course, that's they also are. a big thing. Um, so no plans to breed that group at all. Our black and white lemurs, the two boys from Magnetic Hill Zoo in Moncton, New Brunswick, were brought in for company for Manabe. Uh, so yes. New friends for him. Yes, so right now we have no plans to breed any of our lemurs at this time. Gotcha. Uh, we have teacher Jen watching from Renfrew and is wondering, do the lemurs tend to get mad at each other or <laughs> do they get along? How does that work out? So all of our lemurs live together most of the time. We have the group just divided up today just um, to give everybody a little bit of outside access. Um, everybody has been fully introduced. They spend all afternoon and all night together. Oh, here we are working in a Richmond feeder. <laughs> So they do get along in that respect. Now, lemurs, whether they're in the wild or in our exhibits and they've lived together forever, uh, little squabbles are sort of the norm because we have a little bit of a pecking order with our lemur groups. Now, by watching these black and whites, you would think, oh, well, they're the largest. They must be the tough guys of the group. They must be the ones that are the bosses. Absolutely not. Our <laughs> little ring tails, and if you remember Joanna who had the short tail, she yes. rules this place. So all that means is she gets choice um, and so do all of the ring tail lemurs uh, whenever we put food out. So anytime when we have all the lemurs together, you'll see lemur keepers putting out lots of food several times a day and in wide berths so that all of the lemurs can come and get a chance. But uh, little squabbles, little vocalizations, um, little grabby grabs mm -hmm. without making any contact are what are normal for these guys and that just means they're jostling for position. So we see that at almost every feed that we do and when you guys get to come back to the walkthrough you'll see that as well. And it's very much part of lemur society. That's what happens in the wild, 100%. Ringtail lemurs can live in groups up to 30. Wow. And even within a group that has several family members that are related, the females usually stay in those troops, um, they will have squabbles. So it's just a means for finding your position, 
and making sure. So whenever we're doing an introduction, and as we did with these new boys, what we're watching for is that um, those squabbles become less and less. They become no big deal. Uh, lemurs will move them off of food sites. Uh, these guys tend to move the red fronted off of food <laughs> sites. So whenever we're doing um, anything like a treatment or we need to get specific food into a certain lemur, let's say they're underweight or something like that, what we'll do is a super quick um, just sort of separation of these three groups. And okay. everybody gets what they need to get and then we put them all back together. But definitely during the day when they're all together we do do lots of scatter feeds we make sure we're paying attention and we weigh these lemurs all the time so um, some of them weekly and all of them at least monthly so we're keeping a close eye to make sure everybody's getting enough to eat and that they look uh, healthy and happy as well awesome <laughs> somebody is in the bag and, and somebody is like on the bag in the bag <laughs> yes they love these big bags <laughs> this is funny oh so that's really um, awesome. our friends the citadel park grade threes are wondering how fast these guys can move Oh, well, good, good question. I don't know the exact answer for how fast they can go, but these guys can run and leap for great distances. So right. um, these guys, the black and white rough lemurs in the wild, uh, live in an upper canopy. So they're barely coming to the ground. Uh, they can come to the ground, but it's much safer for them up there in the regions that they live in eastern Madagascar. So they're up and they're traveling from, um, leaping from tree to tree. So they are very good with that. Uh, these guys also, when they are eating, they'll hang down from their feet, those feet, those back feet there, and they can feed on that side of things. But when they're ready to go, these guys go at very high speed. So they're mm -hmm. the fastest out of the three species that we have here at the zoo when they're moving around and they can leap and jump with no fear. And that's why we love having such a high exhibit here, especially yes. indoor. They can use room. every level and travel very quickly. So I didn't really answer your question <laughs> on the exact speed that they can go, um, but our black and whites are very fast. Zoom. That's they as are. fast as they can go. They're pretty fast. Yeah. Monica's wondering, do you <laughs> think the lemurs have noticed that the visitors um, haven't been around and do you think they miss everyone? So that would depend on individuals. Uh -huh. So we certainly, just to bring somebody else into the mix here, the gorillas definitely know that public are not here and they're fans. And so we're <laughs> keeping them busy on that side. Um, our two newest, Tan and Revo, I don't think have noticed any difference um, right. because <laughs> we sort of shut down uh, almost when they first came in. This is true. Manabe, who's been a resident for a long time, uh, he's, he's doing a little bit more vocalizing in the morning, um, but it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to answer that question because you know what? Lemurs are so busy. They're so busy during the day. Yes, being active and doing enrichment and feeding, but uh, yes, napping as <laughs> well. So. We haven't noticed much on this side, but definitely other primates at the zoo, we do see them kind of just coming. And if there's anybody kind of walking up the path, they definitely have their interest. So anybody that's walking around, of which there are not many people right now, of course, to keep these guys safe, um, right. they do notice. Whereas if you look, have large crowds, they sort of, they definitely get used to that. So yes, a little bit of both. I'm sure they do notice 100%, but they are doing just fine, yes. So Nicole, who's watching, she's eight years old mm -hmm. and is wondering, are the lemurs nice to the keepers <laughs> and would a lemur make a good pet? Ah, very good question, Nicole. I'm going to answer that second one first. Uh, lemurs as pets, um, we would never endorse that just because we... Uh, the people that work with them here in captivity and in the wild are all dedicated to lemur conservation. So what we would like to do is to make sure that lemurs remain uh, safe um, within an environment if they are in a captive breeding uh, environment or out in the wild. Um, if you were to take a lemur and usually people have um, one as a pet, these are extremely social, social primates, as most primates are, and you're taking them away from a proper social situation. On the other side of things, um, I don't know if you guys know anything about lemur poop, but there's a lot, <laughs> and there's a reason why these guys are so cute. Um, these guys, because they're natural pollinators, everything flows through them very quickly, so um, they would be very messy as well. But the biggest point to take away from this is uh, any primate and any non-human primate would not be good as a pet 
that. Um, we want them to be in a more naturalistic social situation mm -hmm. for their own good and definitely that's where they excel and that's where they should be most yes. importantly on that side of things. And what was the first question because I'm old and I can't remember. <laughs> Cindy, let me know. It was, Don't get are old, they, kids. Are they, this is what happens. Are they nice or do they get along oh. with the keepers? How, oh. how are they when um, we noticed that Jen was inside and she was right. laying down some food and right. you know. Yes, thanks Nicole. Sorry I forgot your first question. Um, absolutely. Lemurs, um, any way that they are is perfect to a keeper. We work with any of them. Um, these lemurs we work very closely with. So we talked a little bit before about having that crate that was in the exhibit and getting them very used to working with us so that they're very calm. If we ever need to get a really close look uh, at the lemurs, uh, we very respectfully um, are able to get a good look at them. Um, we don't pay pet the lemurs. Uh, they're extremely fluffy and it's very tempting, mm -hmm. um, but we want to respect who they are as well. So anything that we work closely with them with, um, we do get them used to be having us close and our hands close, but we're not ever making them do anything. So anything that we need to work with them, whether it's shifting to a new exhibit, um, putting them into a crate safely if we need to move them on that side, any sort of veterinary checks that we need to do. We want them to be very comfortable with us, certainly, but we want them to be able to, if they want to move away from us, we 100% want that. Uh, we want to make sure that we respect their space, so we try not to be in their space. So a lot of the right. times we're quickly doing enrichments and things and we spend a little time, uh, absolutely, but more than anything, we want them to be lemurs, um, even in captivity. We want them to be able to express natural behaviors and just enjoy the social situation that they're in, because they, with all the lemurs in here, we have 11 of them here at the Calgary Zoo, mm -hmm. with three species, we want them to be able to just do what they need to do. They don't need us in their way, do they? No, they don't. Let our lemurs be lemurs. That's right. Is this Manabe hanging around up there? So there he is. Manabe's just <laughs> showing how well he can hang. He's, he looks like, I'm not sure if he's going to go take a look in there again, but yeah, they love to be high. Any of our lemurs love to get a good view uh, of everything. Uh, the ring-tailed lemurs uh, are ladies. Um, they are the most terrestrial lemur that we have of okay. our three species. So even they, of course, <laughs> like to be high as well. So they like to get up. We have another lemur in a bag, of course. <laughs> Again, like we were talking about, they like to it's get funny. into things. So enrichment, when we're thinking about things for them and new enrichment, we work closely and we're always talking to other keepers around the world as well. We want to make sure that we can offer them new things, exciting things, but things that are safe for them. Yes. And again, promote those natural behaviors. So Because if they happen to tear off a little bit of that paper bag or rip it right. or chew on it a little bit, it's not going to be harmful to them. That's right. And actually, uh, Cindy, they do eat bark uh, uh -huh. in the wild. They eat leaves, they eat flowers, um, a lot of fruit in the wild and nectar so that's how they're being the pollinators for us so anything that we put in these exhibits and around the zoo needs to be safe so that if they do ingest or eat some of that um, by mistake or <laughs> intentionally uh, we know that it's safe for them so anything that goes in here uh, we have a very good enrichment program um, that we make sure that everything is safe for them so they can just have fun we don't worry they don't worry we make sure that everybody's safe and they can just have a good time Absolutely. They have lots of good space to enjoy here in Land of Lemurs. Absolutely. For sure they do. <laughs> Hi. Look well, at we're working these on guys having frozen some fun. treat. Here's Revo on the side here. <laughs> hey. Hi, and here's Manabe, our soon-to-be six-year-old coming over. He's coming to say hello. We've been calling him Uncle Manabe. Aww. These boys, um, they went through a period of quarantine up at our animal health center when um, they were brought from uh, New Brunswick. So what we did was we were able to send Manabe up uh, to spend some of the quarantine period with them to get to know them before bringing them down to the building. That's so important. Right, and we need to make sure that quarantine period is to make sure that everybody's healthy uh, before they come down to our lemur section as well. And absolutely, the tests came back and everybody was good. So we were able to send Manabe up there to do an introduction with our lovely Animal Health Center keepers. 
And then when they came down, they came down as a group. An introduction process can take uh, lots of time. Uh, it took us um, a few weeks for everything and everybody to get together. But mm -hmm. what you want to start with is making sure that these guys are comfortable in all the different spaces, that we have them comfortable mesh to mesh with the other lemurs before they have full contact. And right. then when we do have full contact, we want to make sure that we're around, making sure that everything's okay and everybody did great did great and we are so happy to have these two new black and whites here <laughs> yeah it is awesome for Manabe to have some more buddies that's right you need some black and white backup <laughs> exactly exactly he needs oh, that here we have some let's nappage. go back over I think we're so gonna see the how long family of reds so having a little cuddle puddle over here yeah there's everybody together Aww. They had some great enrichment. They had some onions and some peppers. That's right. And now they're sleepy. If you just pan up, Cindy. Yep. And we've got a ringtail hanging up Oh, let's high. see. So I don't know they, if you guys can see that through the glass, but yeah, it might be a little she's hard. up there. Yeah, so those ringtail there ladies, they were outside and then they felt they would like to come inside. So absolutely, it's a bit of a cooler day. Lemurs, of course, it's no secret. Love the sun. They do. And they, uh, but not so sunny today, so they can come in and rest and do whatever they'd like on this side as well. So they have access to zip outside if they want, but they also know that they can come in. We've That's got right. a couple, I think there's two or three up there. <laughs> Look Let's at everybody up there. Can up and see. So they don't, they have favorite spots to sleep in case anybody had a question on that side. Oh, that's a good one. Um, they do move around. So during different parts of the day, they have naps in different spots. Um, when we typically come in in the morning, um, usually the ringtail lemurs are in this first room. We do have a second room um, just off to the side as well that the lemurs can use as well. And then we open up, we've got a middle uh, corridor that um, makes one big circular route for all of our lemurs when they're all together, hmm. uh, just so everybody can go where they'd like to go. It's a, it's a nice free for all for overnight. And then they can choose wherever they'd like to sleep and with whoever they'd like to sleep. We do find the groupings stay together uh, when they are sleeping though. So you'll see little piles. Little lemur piles. Little lemur piles everywhere, which is awesome. heaven. Yeah, so it's heaven. Well, I think everybody's kind of settling down for a snooze in here. So we will probably say goodbye for the, for the day here. Um, let's see if I can get you guys another close-up on our lemur pile of reds. Aw, they're so cute. Little Red Baron wow. Papa poking his head out. Yeah. <laughs> So tired. He's had it today. <laughs> <laughs> he has had a day. He has well, it Carrie, today. thank you so much thank you. for spending some time with us today, introducing us to all of the lemur groups that we have here. You're welcome. Um, as you guys know, while our doors are closed here at the Calgary Zoo, we are doing our best every day to bring the zoo to you. We're doing that in a few ways. Make sure you do check back <laughs> later today. Oh, look at this. <laughs> We'll just wait. We'll wait a second on that one. <laughs> so you guys, you were wondering how they communicate. There and Carrie go. mentioned that the black and whites are quite loud and you just got to hear it. Cool. Maybe they're upset that we're signing off. They didn't oh, want to say goodbye yes, yet. Yes. Or that was their goodbye to you guys. We'll never know. We'd have to ask them. Um, <laughs> But as I was saying, make sure you guys check back in later today. We're going to have uh, your daily dose. Um, also, tune in tomorrow. It's going to be a very special story time tomorrow. There is going to be um, a French and English, so a bilingual story time tomorrow. We're going to have Sherry Ann sharing the English story. And we have a very special uh, guest doing story time tomorrow. It's our president and CEO, Clement. So he's going to be um, on story time sharing the French version of our storybook tomorrow. Um, as always, you guys, we are warmly accepting donations. If you are in a position to give, please do check out that link in our description box. <laughs> and thank you so much for tuning in today. And thank you for supporting wildlife conservation. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.